Audio Excellence with another, um, well, let's call it a haul, though in this case it's just the one speaker we're going to talk about today. To my side here is the fabled, very, very rare Tenoi Kingdom 18. Now, when I say very rare, let me put it in perspective. I've been in the industry for over 35 years. In all that time, I have heard about these speakers. I've never even seen one, much less heard a pair. Anyway, out of the blue, a couple of weeks ago, um, somebody contacted me and said, we have an estate uh, sale, can you help us with it? And then when they told me what the speakers were, I said, I'm coming. I'm gonna rent the truck, I'm gonna drive three and a half hours there, load up and bring them back and that's exactly what I did. Um, let me tell you a bit about these speakers. In 1997, Tenoy decided they wanted to make one of the very, very best speakers in the world available anywhere. Um, and so they came up with this called the Kingdom 18. The name 18 refers to the woofer, this or more, more, more properly the subwoofer, which I will show you in a moment. <coughs> So the speakers were made between 1997 to about 2006, so about nine years. There's very little information on the internet about them. You have to search a long time before you find something. And mostly you'll find specs. Every so often you'll find something. But anyway, this is what I can tell you about them. In 1997, they were introduced at a cost of 69,000 US dollars. Now I did a quick um, search to see what the exchange was back then. So around 2002, the exchange rate between the US dollar and the Canadian dollar was 1.54 wholesale. In other words, for every US dollar in Canada, we paid $1.54. So if they were 69, call it $70,000 US, in Canadian retail it would have been over $100,000. Now to put another thing in perspective, Back then, in 1997, David Wilson introduced the Wilson Grand Slam X1, or called it X1 Grand Slam. That speaker was the most expensive speaker they offered other than the Wham, which was about 180,000 if I remember correctly. I sold a few pairs, so I should remember, but it's been a long time. Anyway, the Grand Slams were 65,000 US dollars. These cost more than the Grand Slams. So, um, uh, and then every other speaker for the most part costs a lot more. The BMW 800s were much, much, much less. If I remember, they were about 15,000 US, maybe 20,000. So, um, anyway, that's what these speakers are. Um, the vast majority of them <coughs> were shipped to Asia, and very few were made. One, because they're so expensive, and two, because I don't know if. Um, uh, um, yeah. Mike no, can no, capture no, the relative is. size, but the speakers are huge. This is, I, I'm uh, on a good day, five foot eight. <laughs> These come to above my chest. They are, um, let's see if I got, yeah, they are 39 inches wide, so 63 inches high and 33 and a half inches deep. They weigh 375 pounds, if I remember correctly, each. Not, not, not for the pair, each, all right? That's, that's Allison, Mike, and me put together. That's, that's, <laughs> that's how crazy these things are. Um, and the frequency response is 16 hertz to 44 kilohertz plus or minus 3 dB, 16 hertz. Subwoofers don't go down that low. Only really, really big, insane subwoofers can go down that low. This is all in the speaker. And it goes up to 44 kilohertz because there's a super tweeter built in. Um, let's see what else I can tell you. Um, the front and the rear are made of birch wood and the sides are American cherry. Uh, impedance is eight ohms, pretty flat, so easy to drive and 92 dB sensitivity, so very easy to drive. Maximum SPL rated according to the factory is 117 dB. That's in other words, really loud. Um, and max SPL peak is 121 dB. Okay, let me show you. Uh, first of all, physically, there are some cosmetic blemishes. Um, so first of all, this material here is called Nextel. You'll see them very commonly in recording studios. 
it's uh, for some reason used uh, in recording studios, I don't know why. I hate it. It picks up dirt like nobody's business. Um, we tried cleaning it and all it did was just grab onto uh, all the fiber that's on your cloth. And then um, Athar, one of our guys, uh, had to wet, wet it with soap and brush and brush and brush and eventually we got it fairly clean. Um, I'll show you the back where we didn't do a great job. We're going to redo that uh, uh, before the speakers get sold. So that's one thing. Um, this, be this side over here has a bit of sun bleach. I guess this part faced the window. And then there's a little bit of um, uh, a dings at the bottom here. That's probably because the speakers have been moved a couple times and they probably got knocked. Um, not all that uncommon, unfortunately, with really large heavy speakers, and we see this on a regular basis whenever we have to resell large Wilsons, large BMWs, large Focals, you will oftentimes see some dings. Um, again, these are on wheels, that's why I can turn them around, it's not because I'm super powerful. Uh, small little amounts of uh, um, um, blemishes at the top, on this side here it looks okay. Okay, now let me show you the back and what I was talking about. So as you can see, it's a gold-plated plaque here that says Kingdom Tannoy. And there's just a little bit of marks, we just have to wipe it down and that's gone. And see these little marks here, that's just from the water cleaning and so on. Again, we'll, we'll try and redo it, it's not water damage, it's just the way it grabs onto everything. Same thing over here and same thing over here. Um, they can be bi-wireable or bi-amped. Now here's the really cool thing which Mike discovered and I had no idea and forgot all about it. You see this little thing here, you unscrew it, okay, takes forever, and then you insert it in this little hole here, screw in a bit, and then now you can pull out the grill, which weighs a good 15, 20 pounds. This is crazy. This grill is very, very, very solid. So let me put this over here. Ta-da! The insides are mint, like literally mint. I don't think the uh, owner ever took the grills off because it's, it's physically just incredible. There's no marks that I can tell. That's a super tweeter. It's a one inch. That's a 12 inch um, dual concentric driver. Of course, uh, Tenoy is famous for their dual concentric, which means that the tweeter is inset inside the uh, mid-range, in this case, mid-range base driver. So the idea is that it's time aligned naturally. So the sound that comes out of the tweeter and the sound that comes out of the woofer arrives in your ear, to your ears at the same time. This is where you can make some adjustments to the frequency response energy, um, uh, super tweeter, and this is for the high frequency energy as well. Okay, and then you have a roll off uh, octave bass. Now that, this this is the key. That's the 18 inch woofer, solid. And uh, um, so anyway, that's the Kingdom 18. Now, again, just to put things in perspective, subsequent to these speakers, Tenoy decided to continue to make uh, other speakers. Uh, but they stopped making 18-inch woofer designs. So the uh, following ones were called the Kingdom Royals, but they're using 15-inch woofers, still using a 12-inch uh, dual concentric and a super tweeter. They changed the cabinet design so that the super tweeter was now um, f uh, outside, essentially on the top. Um, think of some of the early KEF references and what BMW currently does with their tweeter. It's the same kind of an idea. You can, you can find pictures on the web, uh, on the internet. Um, but physically much smaller. The, the, um, the Royals uh, are about this tall, much narrower and definitely much uh, less deep and over 109 pounds less heavy. Now, I'm not saying weight is the only criteria as far as quality is concerned. It certainly isn't. But it gives you an idea of how substantial these speakers are relative to everything else that uh, Tenoy uh, made subsequent to these. Anyway, these speakers are being, um, as I said, they were approximately 100,000 Canadian dollars, 69,000 US dollars when they were new. They don't have any crates, they don't have any manuals. Um, 
uh, for somebody who wants to buy them and needs them to be shipped, you have to pay for the crates, which will be custom made. My guess is that the crates are going to be about three thousand, maybe thirty-five hundred, maybe less. Whatever the crates cost, you pay. You you can even pay, send the money directly to the crating company. We have nothing to do with that, um, and you pay for shipping and any other import costs. Okay, um, we are selling the speakers for fifteen thousand dollars Canadian which is approximately 11,000 US dollars, whatever the exchange is today. That is an absolute steal. When you think about the fact that little tiny speakers today cost at least that much, if not more. When you think that there are some little accessories that you can buy that cost many, many, many thousands of dollars. This was one of the very, very finest speakers that you could buy at that time and still is one of the best speakers certainly ever made. Um, so again, fifteen thousand dollars Canadian. Don't bother lowballing. The seller, the estate, is not going to accept it. They are a tremendous value for the money, as far as I'm concerned. All right. Any questions? Email me info at audioexcellence.ca. And uh, if you've heard these, if you know anything about these, if if you can send me that information, I would be delighted to know more about them. All right. Um, Allison will be dropping a review video that we just did last a uh, few days ago uh, soon, so watch out for that just so that you don't think that we're constantly making these fluff videos because we have no content. All right, take care everyone. Bye-bye.